Australian-American alliance is built on shared values, history, trust and respect. All of that, it seems, is being tested right now by the unorthodox and unpredictable Donald Trump. At the centre of this is an agreement for America to take more than a thousand asylum seekers held by Australia in offshore detention. President Trump has taken to Twitter calling the deal dumb. This, as a US newspaper reports, President Trump blasting Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull in a tense phone conversation. As political correspondent Andrew Probin reports, it has left the government dumbfounded and Turnbull on the defensive. Deal or no deal, just before midnight in Washington DC, Donald Trump's thumbs struck again. Do you believe it? The president said on Twitter. The Obama administration agreed to take thousands of illegal immigrants from Australia. Why? I will study this dumb deal. This dumb deal is now dominating Australian politics, dogging Malcolm Turnbull at every turn. That is his tweet. I'm telling you what has been said to us uh, and what's been said by his spokesman. The question is, will he uh, commit to honour the deal? And he has given that commitment. But just before a planned news conference came the first bombshell from Washington. And it's all about that weekend phone call. Very busy night now. Breaking news, an angry phone call between President Trump and one of our four closest allies, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull of Australia. Donald Trump reportedly berated Malcolm Turnbull for the refugee agreement he struck with Barack Obama, calling it the worst deal ever. And he accused Australia of seeking to export the next Boston bombers. Dramatic detail the PM defiantly refused to confirm. I'm not going to comment on a, on a conversation between uh, myself and the President of the United States uh, other than what we have said publicly uh, and you can surely understand the reasons for that. He's cosier with an adversary like Putin than a close ally like Australia. What's, yeah. what's happening? The report in the Washington Post is consistent with what I've been told by government insiders about the tense 25-minute phone call. Donald Trump made it clear to the PM he hated the deal and he was only considering it in deference to the US-Australia alliance. Political deals, like sausages, are best not seen in the making, but Malcolm Turnbull sought to turn his handling of the difficult episode into a virtue. Australians know me very well. I always stand up for Australia in every forum. Clearly, uh, President Trump and his people are saying uh, one thing happened in this conversation, which is completely at odds with what uh, Prime Minister Turnbull's told the Australian people. They both can't be right. This afternoon's presidential tweet shows Trump's temperament is a clear and present danger to normal political and diplomatic transactions. In the last few hours, we've seen conflicting statements from the White House, US State Department and the American Embassy in Canberra. The refugee deal has swung from on to maybe back to on and then Trump's declaration of it being dumb. Malcolm Turnbull has sought to protect the deal by not criticising the president, but Trump's first weeks in office have shown that it's no longer business as usual. If this isn't enough to preoccupy the Prime Minister, he's now being irritated by renewed focus on his wealth. Last night on 7.30, he finally revealed just how much he gave to the Liberal Party at the last election. I contributed $1.75 million. That was, now, that was the contribution I made. It's been talked about and speculated about, so there it is. Labor frontbencher Jim Chalmers accused Malcolm Turnbull of using his bulging wallet to buy the election, sparking furious defence. That's a grubby political smear from a grubby political hack of a party of hacks um, led by Bill Shorten. He said I've that he's acted within his legal obligations, but I don't think he's acted within his ethical obligations. When you're going to make a monster donation, you have to be out of touch to think that's not relevant. He goes out there every day and he attacks me for having done well, paid tax, made a quid, bought a nice house. He hates that. And he calls me Mr Harborside Mansion. It was, in fact, Tony Abbott's chief of staff, Peter Credlin, who gave Malcolm Turnbull the nickname Mr Harborside Mansion, and it clearly still rankles. I can't be bought by anyone. I'm not a wholly owned subsidiary of the CFMEU. 
like Bill Shorten. I'm my own man. And Bill Shorten hates that. As to the future of the refugee deal, the PM is still holding the line. All of the concerns about security mm. are, are, are perfectly well sure. able to be met and it is up to the Americans right. as to which of those people for whom we are seeking to find a resettlement uh, option, uh, which of those people they decide to take. The president's Twitter account has gone silent, which might mean he's asleep. But in this brave new world of Trump, no one can be sure what will happen when the alarm goes off in the morning. So, should Malcolm Turnbull take a tougher public stance against Donald Trump? Certainly, former Labor Foreign Minister Bob Carr seems to think so. Carr has penned an editorial calling Trump a loudmouth nationalist. He says our leaders have acted like doting couriers in the past to the US, and Trump's behaviour is a wake-up call to those who insist we have a special relationship with America. Bob Carr heads the Australia-China Relations Institute at the University of Technology. He joined me earlier from Singapore. Bob Carr, good to have you with us. You've written an editorial where you are questioning the future and scope of the US-Australia alliance. Is that not an overreaction to the Trump presidency? Oh, it would be if that's what I was saying, but uh, in, in the op-ed I've written for The Australian tomorrow, I say that this is, this is a healthy thing for Australia. The, the response of Donald Trump to the phone call made by our Prime Minister. I think it's a reminder to Australians that America is different. America has changed. America is declaring it's America first from now on. That's a, a quote from the, uh, the inauguration speech by the President. And I, I just think it's healthy if we absorb that fact. Everyone supports the alliance in Australia. There's a consensus on that. I'm not advocating we move away from it. It's, a, it's one of the pillars of Australian foreign policy. But it's not the, it's not the be all and the end all of Australia's international character. And now, that's the point I'm making. Now, I hear you on the nature of Donald Trump and what he's had to say about America's role in the world. But how has that helped the relationship with the US and dealing with Donald Trump when you are using phrases such as a loudmouth nationalist, that's what you're calling him, you're saying that it should wake us up to the quaint belief that the US-Australia relationship is somehow something special. How does that help in what is a volatile time. Well, Stan, take that, that point I made, uh, the notion that somehow we've got the most special relationship with America in the world. I could easily give you a list of 20 countries that hold that belief. America is the proud possessor of an alliance system. It's one of the things that distinguishes the US and advantages it over any other contenders for global leadership. And uh, I, it's useful if Australians understand that Poland, for example, would regard itself as having every bit as special a relationship with the United States as Australia, that, that uh, Barack Obama on his farewell tour to Europe was talking about Germany as America's most important partner in the world. In Britain, the transatlantic alliance is regarded as a, an article of religious faith up there with the, the Apostles' Creed. Um, uh, we, we've got to be, I think we've got to be sensible and realistic as Australians and practical about the alliance. It is not the only part of our international personality. And if this, if this rude dismissal of the representations by an Australian Prime Minister, altogether legitimate representations by President Trump, serves to remind Australians of that great truth, then it's a very good and healthy thing. You talk about being realistic and sensible. Is that not what Malcolm Turnbull is doing here? He has <clears throat> negotiated with Donald Trump. He says he has secured the, the deal to take some of the asylum seekers with the United States. Is that not better than calling him a loudmouth nationalist or other insults that others have thrown at Donald Trump? Well, if you're saying, Stan, that no Australian can criticise Donald Trump, that's a remarkable position to adopt. I think, I think Donald Trump ought to be taken at his own, his own measure. He is saying he's a nationalist. He's saying, he said it in his inaugural address, that he's putting America first. He called NATO, this is his attitude towards alliances, he called NATO a, uh, a redundant alliance. Now, we, 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 don't want to live, we don't want to live under the illusion that things are the same as they once were. Where an American president, an American president can tweet his contempt for an Australian Prime Minister after what 
the Australian Prime Minister might have expected to have been treated as a confidential exchange between friends. This has been, it has been a rude treatment of an Australian leader, unprecedented in the contact between Australian leadership and American leadership. It was followed up by a highly offensive tweet that was entirely unnecessary and it, it contained, it contained the message that this American president doesn't regard ANZUS as a useful starting point for the Australian-American relationship. You don't treat a loyal treaty partner like this. But, and that's why I said, that's why I, say, uh, I said in my, my draft op-ed that I hope appears tomorrow, that uh, this is a darn healthy thing for Australians and I think we, we ought to reflect on it. But it is about doing what is productive. The US still is a, is a key part of, of the world global order. It has been a bedrock of, as you know, a bedrock of security and stability in the region and the relationship has been a bedrock one for Australia as well. As Malcolm Turnbull seeks to navigate that at these times, isn't it better <coughs> to be prudent rather than to be seen to be provocative? Stan, I've got no idea what your argument is. If Australians are banned from commenting on the the most negative exchange between an Australian Prime Minister and an American President going back to the time of John Curtin and Franklin Roosevelt, then I don't know what's become of any notion of us as an independent nation and one that chooses to be an, to be an alliance partner of the US. That's our status here. And if criticism of the United States is forbidden, if it's beyond the possibility that we could respond to a nationalistic dismissal of an Australian Prime Minister by the new American President, then I don't know what's become of us. OK, good to talk to you, sir. Thank you again for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.